Hey guys, in this video, we're going to revisit a topic that we haven't touched on in a while. So what I wanna do in this video is take another look at how far Casa OS has come. Now, I just want to be transparent about this. I haven't touched Casa OS since the last time I made a video about it, uh, not because it's not a great platform, it just isn't the right platform for what I want to do with my setup. Um, and, and of course, I'm part of their Discord and I get notifications about all of the updates and that sort of thing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually, I've spun up a VM in Proxmox uh, you can install this however you'd like to install it, whether it's on bare metal or a Raspberry Pi or, or uh, uh, you know, an SBC of whether it's x86 or ARM or whatever. Uh, lots of different opportunities on ways to install this, but I'm just gonna put this in a Proxmox container no, a Proxmox VM, uh, just for ease of use and that sort of thing. Uh, and then we're gonna record everything uh, as we're going through this. I actually haven't looked at this. Uh, I've actually got uh, Ubuntu uh, server version, I think 2204 uh, installing while I'm recording this bit right here. Uh, so once it has fully installed, we'll go through the whole installation process of Casa OS and all of that and get a better idea of how far, again, how far Casa OS has come since we've last looked at it. Okay, so we've got Ubuntu 22.04, again, I believe, yep, 22.04, uh, set up and ready to go at this point. We've done all of our updates and all of the installation, that sort of thing. Uh, so let's jump over here to our hardware tab just real quick. Uh, just so we can make sure we've got one, one socket, two cores, four gigs. Uh, we've got a 64 core or 64 gig boot drive and a 128 gig uh, uh, data drive or storage drive all set up and ready to go here. Uh, so at this point, what we wanna do, I think, is come over to the console. Uh, and get logged in. There we go. And then let's see, let's do an IP ADR show. Uh, just so I can make sure that it is uh, 1.67, perfect. So what we're gonna do is open up a terminal window. So you guys may have noticed at this point that my desktop does look a little bit different. Uh, I've decided that I'm gonna do all of my recording uh, in Linux and then I'll do all my editing in Windows. Uh, just was having too many issues with Windows. So I think I'm just gonna go with Linux for a while until I get over my, my disdain for Windows at this point. So uh, let's open up a terminal window here and let's do an SSH uh, DB tech at 192.168.1.67, I believe is what we what we determined there. Somewhere, yep, dot 67, perfect. I hit enter, uh, yep, that's fine. I wanna go ahead and do that. Okay, so we are logged in, oops, let's. Okay, so now we've got a big, bigger screen, bigger text, let's do this. So what we wanna do is come over here to casaos.io uh, and just grab this command right here. And that's what we're going to use to install Casa OS. So now we can minimize our uh, our, our uh, browser there. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and paste that in and hit go. So while this is doing its thing, uh, as far as pulling assets and resources and dependencies and all of that stuff, we can kind of see everything that's going on here. Once it's done, we should be able to go back over to our browser window and open up our, our dashboard and get logged in and take a look at the new changes to Casa OS. A few moments later. Okay, so that was actually really, really painless. I'm stoked that they haven't complicated it at all. So now what we can do is of course, head back over to our browser window here, uh, oops, there we go. Uh, so we're gonna go to, oops, I don't remember. Do we wanna do HTTP or HTTPS? Oh, just HTTP, cool. Do HTTP, oops. Uh, 192.168.1.67, oops. I hate autofill on Chrome sometimes. There we go, all right. Let's full screen that again. So we're gonna create our initial account here. We'll click go and we'll put in a username and password here, just like we would expect. And then we'll click create. Okay, interesting. So uh, a lot of this does look similar here. Let's do that, there we go. So we've got our date and time up here on the top. Uh, we've got, of course, our search, uh, data sync, smart up your home, they're still in development on that. Uh, we've got files and Casa Connect. This is new, I haven't seen Casa Connect before. With this feature, you can easily create peer-to-peer -peer file sharing transfers between you and your friends. That is very cool. Well done, uh, Ice Whale team, Casa OS team. That is very, very cool. I dig that a lot. Um, so this is uh, my, the initialization wizard. We'll click next. Uh, we can add uh, folders that we want to share here. Uh, so I'm guessing as we were to, if we wanted to, we could create additional folders and that sort of thing and share this. So I'm just gonna click on share gallery. Sure, why not? Uh, download path, that looks fine. So we'll click next. 
The share is ready. Now you can follow the guide to learn how to use it. So we'll click go. Um, okay, so this is uh, where we'll have an avatar. We want to do that. We can click uh, plus to add your friend's ID and send a friend request. We'll click next. Download progress and, and the download history is here. That's cool. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to find somebody who who wants to um, who wants to share some resources if only for demonstrative purposes here. This is really neat. So let's click let's go. Uh, so we can click on add friend. And then we've got a, uh, a friend share ID. So we would need to get a friend share uh, ID in order to make this work, but that's very cool. I love the idea of being able to create kind of a private little network uh, in Casa OS just that easily. That's really cool. I dig that a lot. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's actually jump out of this. Let's take a look at our files, just see what's kind of in here. We've got app data, uh, documents, downloads. I love this. This wasn't a thing last time I looked at Casa OS. So uh, having all of this in here, I really, really like this. This looks really, really good. Uh, and of course, we've got options to upla upload or create additional files and folders there. And of course, that's going to be available in all of our different folders. Uh, of course, we can we can change the uh, the list view to uh, to grid view. I love this is I'm really impressed with this. This has come a long way since I've looked at it. Um, I like that it also shows two cores, and how much RAM, how much we're using there. If I open this up, uh, of course, we can see uh, what uh, processes are using, uh, you know, as far as uh, RAM and CPU usage. I love that. Um, <clears throat> I am not, however, seeing my other drive. That's interesting. I will have to take a look at that. Uh, so under our account, we've just got that. That's fine. Settings, again, search engine. We've got the option to switch all of that out for DuckDuckGo, Google, or Bing. Our language support, lots of different languages in there. We can change our port. I love that. Uh, auto mount USB, uh, that's great. Um, I love that it's got the most current version in here so we can see that. Uh, and of course, we've got terminals and logs. Let's take a look. Nothing in here just yet because we haven't done anything at this point. So that's very cool. I'm loving this. What's down here? Okay, so that's so we can just select uh, which, uh, which little blocks over here we'd like to see. Now, the big one for me at this point, uh, I mean, this, this all looks great. There's been some definite changes here. I do want to see what's in their app store. Wow. This has definitely come a long, long way. Um, so, oh, they've got a Unify controller in here. We've got Vault Warden in here, Plex, Jellyfin, uh, MB, holy crap. Lots of really, really good stuff uh, going on in here. Um, Node Red, Duplicati, Sonar, Radar, wow, okay. Well, uh, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's install that. If you'd like to get early access to my content, you can head over to Patreon, become a channel member here on YouTube, or head over to dbtech.fans, and any of those ways will help support the channel and give you early access to ad-free content. I'm gonna open that back up. I'm gonna go ahead. Um, so our web interface, we're gonna listen on all interfaces, but I do want that to be on port 3000. Uh, DNS servers, 53, that's fine. Click next. We'll, uh, we'll create a username and a password. Next. And of course, we're not gonna use either of these IP addresses. Uh, we'll use the one up here in, in our uh, window up there. Click next. We'll open our dashboard. There we go, that's better. So now let's get logged in. Like so. And now we have AdGuard Home set up and running just that quickly and easily. That is really, really impressive. Uh, I'm really digging what they've done here. So let's let's do one more, uh, one more app here, just real quick. Um, all tube downloader. That's cool. Let's do that. Um, I've actually been using something called MeTube uh, for for archiving videos when I need to, whether it's you know on YouTube or Reddit or Twitter or whatever. Um, so let's take a look at uh, this Rudloff slash All Tube. Let's see how that goes. What that looks like. That sort of thing. Okay, so we have now installed All Tube Download. We're gonna go ahead and click open there. Just that easily, huh? Well, let's let's head over to uh, YouTube. Let's take a look at one of my videos. Let's see if we can find a, a shorter video. I, I tend to talk a lot in these. So we're gonna copy link address, download. All right, so now, of course, now we can choose uh, best or worst for formats. Uh, and we'll click download. Let's see what happens. 
interesting. So it doesn't actually download it so much as give you direct access to where you can download it from. This is still Google Video here. So I'm willing to bet if I were to, oops, if I were to click, oops, no exit, uh, control S. Uh, yeah, then I can download it at that point. So this doesn't really download it for you, but again, that's that's not a Casa OS thing. That is definitely um, uh, a feature, if you want to call it that, of Alltube download, at least in regards to uh, this setup here. Wow, I'm you know I gotta say uh, again, I haven't looked at um, at this in quite a while. You know what though? I have an idea. I want to take a look at something here. <clears throat> I ran into a situation earlier where somebody reached out to me and said, "Hey, I can't get." the uh, files that I need in order to uh, install uh, WordPress. That was a video that we took a look at a, at a while back. So let's see if we can find those files. Uh, then we're going to download these two files, like so. And then we're gonna come back over to Casa OS, go to App Store. We wanna do a custom install. Uh, I, want to, I want to upload a file. That file. We're going to do the database first. Click submit. <clears throat> hey, make sure you double check this. We're going to click OK there. Uh, Maria database. OK, this all looks good. Um, don't really think I need to do anything here. I'm going to change that back to 30. You know, what? I'm going to leave it because it was just like that. Cool. We'll click install. We'll let this run for a minute. Once this is up and running, uh, then what we're going to do is uh, install the WordPress container uh, JSON file and see if these two will actually communicate with each other. OK, so we have our Maria database there. So let's uh, do this one more time here. Uh, we're going to do a custom install. We're going to import. We're going to go to an app file. And then I'm going to grab this WordPress.json there and click submit and say, yep. And then all of this looks fine. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, click on install. Now here's the thing, right? I, I absolutely could uh, have changed these uh, this host location uh, to actually be, um, let's open this back up uh, over here in the, uh, if I were go to files and then app data, I absolutely should have installed it in here, but this was the old way, the, the way I used to do it. So, so don't necessarily do that. Make sure you put these in the right locations for, uh, for the best possible outcome here. But we're just gonna run with it at this point. I'm gonna click install. Oops, but app name already exists. Uh, we'll just do a WP then. Fine, uh, install. Okay, so we've got our WordPress and our WordPress DB. So let's open WordPress and see what happens here. Okay, this is good. This means that things are communicating the way we would want them to, so we'll click continue. We're gonna give this a site title. Uh, we're gonna call this Casa WP, and we'll click install. All right, so we're gonna get logged in. All right, so this is WordPress 6. I actually haven't looked at WordPress 6 yet, uh, even though I've got a site hosted on WordPress, have not updated to 6 just yet. Uh, so let's pop this open in a new tab. All right. So I'm really digging where Casa OS is headed these days. Um, they they kind of do a uh, a weekly thing where they try to take uh, comments and suggestions and that sort of thing and build new functionality into Casa OS to make it uh, the most user friendly they can for the widest group of people. Uh, if you haven't already joined their Discord, you should absolutely do that. Uh, they've got a great team of people in there, uh, both you know users as well as developers and all sorts of people who are trying to contribute to Casa OS to make it even better. And <clears throat> like I said, I haven't been in Casa OS in a while and it's really come a long way. There are a couple of little things that I need to, to kind of troubleshoot on my end. But overall, I'm super, super happy with how it looks, how it's developed since the last time I was in here. So if you haven't checked out Casa OS for yourself, this is definitely a good time to do it. If And, and if you have taken a look at Casa OS but haven't in a while, now is a good time to do that too. So uh, hopefully uh, you found this video helpful in some capacity. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't, give the video a thumbs down. But do me a favor, tell me why you didn't like the video. Hey, quick question for you. Are you happy with your current job or career? Do you like going to work every day and see yourself doing what you're doing right now forever? If not, I'd like to share with you a little bit about the sponsor of this video, The Programmer Coach. The Programmer Coach is an online coding program that helps people learn how to code and get a high paying job as a software developer. Their program is unique in that they teach you how to code by doing through practice, which is truly the only way to learn any skill at the end of the day, right? 
Plus, they provide you with coaches to help you whenever you run into any issues. They also have career coaching and placement service where they work with you and help you get your first job as a software developer. And the best part? Their program is affordable and accessible for anyone and everyone. That's right, you won't pay the bulk of your tuition until you actually land a job as a software developer. To learn all of the details you would ever need and get all of your questions answered, simply go to becomeaprogrammer.com. Once again, that's becomeaprogrammer.com. But I think with all of that said, I am going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I do want to thank you for spending just a few minutes of your day with me. It really does mean a lot to me, but I'm going to wrap this up. So I will talk to you guys in the next video.